This third order transfer function can be approximated as a second order transfer function, provided that the complex poles that you get from this part of the equation have real parts that are much smaller than the other real pole s equals to minus 50. The poles of this transfer function are s1 equals to negative 50, which corresponds to the real pole here, and s2 equals to negative 5 plus 5j, s3 equals to negative 5 minus 5j. s2 and s3 are the complex poles that come from this part of the denominator. Now we notice here that the real part of the complex poles is negative 5, whereas the other real pole is negative 50. The real part of S1 is much greater than the real part of S2 and S3. In this case, S1 can be neglected. The reason again is that the exponential created by this real pole would decay much faster than the exponential created by the real part of the other pole. Now in order to simplify this transfer function, we can set this S to zero and rewrite the transfer function as follows. The first pole being neglected, we are left with 50 times s squared plus 10s plus 50, which simplifies to 50 over s squared plus 10s plus 50. Notice then when s tends to 0, the original transfer function tends to 1. And notice now that when s tends to 0, it also tends to 1. We maintain the same final value. In order to plot the time response to a unit step input, we need to define a function t of s as a transfer function. To make it simple, we can define a transfer function that is equal to s and then create a polynomial t that is also a function of s. And in that case, s will make t a transfer function as well. Let's call our polynomial s because we want a variable that is called s. We can use the standard definition of a transfer function in MATLAB and you want the numerator to have s and the denominator to have one. So here are the coefficients for the numerator and denominator, so you have s plus 0 divided by 1. When you run this part of the code, we see that we created a continuous time transfer function. Now here is the transfer function given in the problem. You see that this is a function of s, and s is a transfer function itself. So when you run this, we see that now we have t of s as a transfer function given in the problem. The step response of t of s can be obtained by simply typing step t. This implies a step unit input. And when you run the code, we see the time response here. Now let's go ahead and see the step response of the simplified transfer function. To do that, I'm going to add here hold on so we can overlay several plots in the same graph. And let's now redefine the transfer function using the simplified form. So here we can get rid of s plus 50 and we also divided the numerator by 50. And let's call this t1. Let's run the code again. And here we see both responses, that of t and t1, the original transfer function and the simplified transfer function. And you can see that despite the fact that the transient is a bit different, these functions are very close to each other. And you can only do that because the real part of the non-dominant pole is much greater than the real part of the dominant poles. So this is a fair approximation of the original third order transfer function.